Uh, counselor? There's a raccoon stuck in the vending machine. That's so annoying. I wanted a snack. Welcome to Trail Mix, our mini episodes from Camp Counselors Podcast. Each week, the stories come from you, our Camp Shady Birch campers. We want to hear your juicy gossip, top secret confessions, embarrassing and scary stories, and sprinkle in our sage counselor advice. Trail Mix is for the campers. And God, do we love you. Hey, Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Trail Mix. This is our mini episode. She's super teensy. She's super tiny. She's an Aquarius, a size double zero. And it's brought to you by listeners like you. Thank Thank you. you. Like a little slider of an episode, but the content or the beef of the patty is truly you. Speaking of beef. Okay. Well, it just made me think about it. This is like so random and so funny. Jonathan and I finally started watching um, The The Bear. Bear. Wait, I, the bear is so funny to me because A, I worked in restaurants, so I already like wanted to watch it for that reason. But I remember the promo being like so hot and heavy the summer we moved here. Yeah. It came out in the end of June of 2022 Mm -hmm. and we moved here July 1st. So we were seeing it everywhere, but like you were being bit by a spider. We were in the throes of it all. And I think we needed something consistent and something that we knew and it wasn't the time to start something fresh. Yeah, it's trash reality TV. We're sticking with the Bravo universe. It was just too much at once. But now that we're like, they just started season three. Well, they did when we filmed this episode. Um, I'm loving it. I am too. It's really, it's not what I thought it was going to be, but also at the same time it is. It's beefy. It's beefy. It's juicy. It's well done. I love Ayo so much. She's from Dorchester and I just love a mass girl. And I love to see a mass, anyone from, I love to see people from where I'm from win. Mm-hmm. Always like, and I you are so the same way because we'll watch the most obscure movie and there'll be someone with one line and you're like, yeah, they're from Upper Darby, Upper Darby girl, <laughs> Upper Darby girl. Like you love to know. Okay, who- don't talk shit on Upper Darby. Mean I Girls, the Mean Girls movie. My father went to Upper Darby High with Tina Fey, and that is where the movie is based. It's based on a book, but her real life experience is at Upper Darby High. You know I love Upper Darby. I'm an Upper Darby girl through and through. Yeah, you are. You give mm-hmm. Darby. I'm not Lower Darby. I'm not. I'm always been Upper Darby. Yeah. No, I know we've talked about this in the show before but i think people just love to know like and support people from where they're from it's just like it's a, i don't know lizzie borden yeah but like that's just not on my radar i'm not a spook girl <laughs> well, it's like not that. on anybody's radar anymore you know who's on my radar all the time who? from wareham massachusetts who gina davis oh we love gina davis gina davis is a powerful woman and i only support powerful women Amen. um speaking of powerful women powerful gays powerful days i am a powerful gay and i want to talk to you guys today really quickly about um how much i appreciate or i have a better understanding for makeup removal in a couple of my bits this year I've been doing a little bit of a light beat, a little bit of an eyeshadow, maybe a winged liner. And not only is the skill of doing good makeup, whether you're a boy or girl, he, she, they, right? Whoever's doing makeup, like that's a skill in itself. But we're not talking about how awful the makeup removal process is. My face is covered in glitter still. I still have like a white shimmer in like the creases of my eye. And my face feels so raw. And I didn't have makeup pads. I was using a paper towel, a paper towel in my cellar water. And my face just feels horrible right now. As you were saying that before you even brought up the word makeup, I was gonna tell you that you still have glitter all over your face. But maybe, maybe use like a soft towel. I didn't want to ruin because all we have is white face cloths. I didn't want to ruin it. Well, our white face cloths are kind of like I know. Borderline gray. They need to be replaced. And I've actually used to only be a white towel user. And as I've gotten older, I'm like, wait, it's just so much easier to have a like a color towel, like a yeah. green or a blue. Like I've actually switched away from that. If it's soft, it's for me. But what is my cellar water? Um, well, I know it's it's your attic water. It's my cellar water. Exactly. It's just some form of like greasy water that's really good at makeup removal. And uh, it doesn't make me break out. And it actually really closes my pores. Like I'm like virtually poreless after I remove makeup. I don't, it's like clogging it, but you cannot, I have like the deepest pores ever in my T-zone, not as being a skincare podcast, <laughs> um, but when I when I clean with micellar water, I don't know if it's clogging it or whatever, but I look like a porcelain doll. Maybe I should use that. I'm kind like, of, yeah, I kind of think we should use it just as like a base. Well, yeah, as like a double cleanse. I know about a double cleanse. Not people that actually do skincare on this podcast being like, you're, do not do everything that you're saying. Nobody comes here for skincare. You guys have seen my pores. <laughs> no, you have, you have great skin. I appreciate that, but you're lying. You're born with the pores that you are. You're born into the body that you 
are, you have to be comfortable with it. It's a long uphill battle our entire lives to love who we are. Mm. We are just a shell and we are a little spirit floating around like a firefly almost in this big corpse. Absolutely beautifully sad. Well, thank you. This episode is sponsored by Garnier Micellar Water. <laughs> Just kidding. No, it's not. Um, let's get into today's episode. We have a lot of fantastic stories, don't we? Yes. Yeah, speaking of beautifully sad. I have a camper story about uh, this camper. She went away to uh, uh, an outdoor experience and it sounded like hell. And I want to read it. I've got a camper with a circumcision slip up. I have another story that a camper wrote in that's basically about her just making poor choice after poor choice. And a horse stable horror story that is so crazy. We're going to have to like give a trigger warning before that, but that's going to come at the very end. That story is, but like that is one of the craziest, kookiest, uh, spookiest stories that we have ever read. It might go down in history as being the kookiest, scariest, spookiest story ever read. In Cam Counselor's history. Well, I think we should get into it. This is a really big secret. Thank God we're on a body of water. This is Confession Canoe. Welcome back to Confession Canoe. Plead your case, spill your guts, confess to your favorite counselors. If you want to be a part of the show for any of our segments, you can write into campcounselorspodcast.com or send us an email at campcounselorspod at gmail.com for any of our segments, including Confession Canoe, and get on the show. Should I start off our show? Can you tell we both had one singular sip? Of an espresso martini that did not come out well. I feel like we're both like hype and like ready to go. Oh, it's that me espresso. It's also like a winter, not winter. Oh my God. A <laughs> summer like storm outside. It is. It is pitch black outside. It's like, spooky. I'm scared. If we weren't doing this right now, I'd have like a lamp on and a cuppa and a book. You know what's never happened to us since we've moved here is the power hasn't gone out. Knock on wood. No, we did lose gas for four days. So maybe that's the, the trade off. Okay. Yeah, you're not wrong in saying that. Let's get into it. Okay. Hi, my Gorgina counselors. It's me, Jezebel, from Ethan and the Big Apple episode. Oh, wait. So we're talking to an OG camper here, a girl that's been around. Because she didn't go back and listen to that episode. She was a part of that episode. I don't remember the story, but I know that that was a Halloween episode the first year we did this. Yeah, and that's like, that was one of my favorite episodes from the very beginning. Yeah, Ethan uh, and the Big Apple. This is a long story about a mandatory camping trip from hell. To set the scene, it was May of 2017. I was a junior in college studying physical education, aka I just wanted to be a gym teacher. That's such like a hard, it's so funny, right? Because it's like you have to learn to be a gym teacher, but a lot of it does feel like, what are we doing here? Yeah, happy pride. <laughs> um, It's literally August. <laughs> I was always an athletic girly, so I knew I wanted to do something with sports, but when I signed up for this major, little did I know I would be forced to take a two-week hiking trip in upstate New York. Um, this was not my idea of sports. I mean, I'm going to be a New York City gym teacher. What Brooklyn gym class even partakes in this torture? I'll explain the torturous activities in the next paragraph. Anyways, this was this was a required course to graduate, and the average grade was a C. Because if you didn't smile the entire time and actually want to fuck the trees, you would wind up getting a big fat C. She's got some beef with this program, with this class, with this teacher. This was basically her venting about the worst two weeks of her life outdoors. And I kind of feel like it's very camp counselors because as much as we are a camp theme podcast, like there is an element of us not liking the outdoors. Yeah, just like a smidge. Yeah. I want to preface that we did have an in-person lecture that meant once a week for the semester, but they didn't prepare us at all for what was to come. Are you ready? Okay. So we get to the campsite and we actually had cabins with bathrooms and showers and a mess hall. Shout out Sam Edge. He made this week tolerable. However, the first day was truly unbelievable. The professor immediately made us jump in the water and do a fucking swim test. Mind you, today was about 45 degrees out and the lake was probably 30 degrees or less. They let us go out two at a time, which I guess was nice. When my friend and I jumped in, we'll call her Henrietta, we instantly couldn't catch our breaths. It felt like our heart was frozen. Basically starting off your two-week camping excursion doing a cold plunge. Yeah, this sounds like, um, what was that Sandoval Jojo Siwa show? Special Special unit? Forces. Special Forces. It does. So that's what it sounds like. It does sound like that. Like, please relax. Um, I thought we were going to die. We tried our best to take a slow breath. And once we were able to move, they made us swim about 30 feet out to a cone, flip on our backs and float for 30 seconds, then swim another 30 feet to another cone and another 30 feet back to the dock. 
absolutely shivering and pissed off that we that they almost killed us, all knowing I was going to get that C. Would you ever do a polar plunge? Well, I've done um, a cold plunge for five minutes, so I could do you it. You have, and I can vouch for you. I was there for that. Yeah, I think I the the scariest part about this is not the weather or the temperature. It's I can't swim. I I True. I physically, guys, like when I say I can't swim, I can go into a pool and I can kind of like kick my feet and like be close to an edge. And but I, if you told me to jump into water, like hold myself up for thirty seconds, then go over and then be on my back and then do another, I I literally could not do that, you guys. Well, also, what was you did the cold plunge in the Hamptons during I think it was September, maybe yeah. August. So it was really hot when you got it doesn't, out. It doesn't matter. I think it does because if you're doing a cold plunge, which is in a similar temperature, when you get out, the air outside is, is I'm freezing. telling you, your heart is so like messed up from being in cold water. Like I don't think it matters what you get out of. I think it just it's it's horrific. It's an awful experience. Is there actual scientific evidence that backs up that that's good for you? Because I feel like I have seen it 50-50 where it's like it's good for you and then it's like, no, it's not good for you, especially if you have like an untreated heart symptom that you may not even know about. Um, I don't know. I'll have to ask the experts. Well, I thought you were the expert. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we should honestly comment below. Even if you're not an expert, just pretend to be one. That's what the internet does these days. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, that might have been the worst part of week one. During that week, they taught us how to build tents, fires, cook on a fire, climb rope horses, canoe, capsize a canoe, rescue people who are capsized, hold a canoe above your head for miles, pack a bear can and navigate a compass because I forgot I'm not going to have the GPS on my phone when I take my high school gym class out hiking in Prospect Park. <laughs> If you don't know, it's like literally a park in the middle of Brooklyn. Like she does not need this to be a New York City gym teacher. But like, hey, they're trying to keep you an all seasons athlete here. You got to know how to read a compass though. You don't. Yeah. I'm like, now I'm thinking, I'm like, do I know how to read? I know like what each direction means, but I feel like it's not valuable unless you know what's in that direction. Um, like, great. I'm going north, but what's north? So who knows? The pole. That's true. You'll end up getting the snow eventually. We also had to meet every morning after breakfast by the old flagpole for morning announcements. Wow. Ugh, but it wasn't Camp Shady Birch announcements. It was the itinerary for a long, exhausting day ahead. I did try to enjoy learning some of these things, but I had no idea that the worst was yet to come. After the first week, they expected us to be fully prepared to go out into the wilderness with a leader and six other students in each group. We had the option of either only hiking or only canoeing or doing 50-50. What would you pick? I would do 50-50. This is, a, a, I think it's like a, a week excursion though. So you do, you do like half the week canoeing and then half the week hiking? Yeah. I don't want to do a full week of hiking. Well, <laughs> Henrietta and I chose to only hike because the lake was traumatizing experience to say the least. Fair. I think I also would have done the only, um, the only hiking. I would have been with you. So we pack up our disgusting food like gumbo and peanut butter wraps into our bear, our bear cans, get the clothes we need, and shove it into our backpacks, which then weighed 60 pounds. Our hike excursion was going to be six days long with a rough estimate of 10 miles a day. Are they like hiking around and then coming back to camp or are they hiking out for fucking 10 days? I think they're doing like six days, just a total hike trip. Oh, okay. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, 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 gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. I don't know how deep in the woods we're talking here. Well, if you're going, you're going 30 miles out and then 30 miles back. Oh my God, imagine canoeing for 10 days straight. Like yeah. not touching land. Exactly. How big is this river? I'm scared. The leaders were not allowed to help us with directions. It was our job to figure it out. So the second day, we got so lost, we wound up hiking 22 miles. That has to be so fucking annoying. Sorry to keep stopping you, but that has to be so fucking annoying so to be a annoying. leader who knows it's like shit. Like now I'm out here for an extra 10 miles in the wrong direction. And they're carrying 60 pounds on their back. If we didn't set up our tents and start our fire as soon as we stepped foot onto the campsite, we got that C. Best believe I didn't do shit. Also keep in mind, most campsites didn't have an outhouse to use the bathroom. We couldn't shower. We couldn't wear deodorant or the bears and bugs would get us. So we were stinky. No deodorant. I'm like, okay, that's crazy. Did my gym teacher go through this? Like, did all of the gym teachers go through this? I don't know where this program is. It seems a little extreme. This seems like survivalist training, not I'm going to be a gym teacher doing dodgeball. Yeah, which can be fun if you want to do that. Yeah. Most campsites had lean-tos to sleep in as well. Do you know what that is? Lean? Lean Lean-tos? I've heard of that before. I've never I think heard. it's like a raised platform with like a built over 10. Oh, a lean-to is just the platform. I've slept on a lean-to. I could be incorrect on that. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a raised platform. I believe so. <laughs> you, for, you've never been camping. No. 
I've been to camp. Yeah, a little different. Than a I've never pitched a tent and slept outside. I pitched a tent and we were going to sleep outside, but there was a Grease movie marathon on. So I went inside to do that when we came back out to the tent. A skunk had gotten into my EL Fudge cookies. Oh, well, I've seen you pitch another tent, so you're okay. Ooh. When we got to our campsite on the third day, there was a lean-to which could fit about five people. Henrietta and I decided to sleep in our tent that night. I get woken up at 6 a.m. by one of the other guys in our group freaking the fuck out. We'll call him Carlito. Apparently, I forgot to put my Nutella cup in the bear can and left it in my bag, which was being used as a pillow in the lean-to. Carlito said there were mice crawling around my head, biting me and making holes in your bag because of your stupid ass Nutella. Oh my God. I was mortified and couldn't stop apologizing. We laughed about it after, but he hated me the rest of the trip. Henrietta and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. If a mice is biting me in the middle of the of like my slumber, I'm done. I'm not going to be a gym teacher. I'm going to go back to school. I'm thinking about accounting. I'm not doing this. You wake up and there's like a piece of your cartilage missing. Exactly. Like- Imagine being a mouse in the middle of the woods, never having any food besides like a rotting berry. Your mm-hmm. lifespan is, I don't know, maybe two months. And you come across a jar of Nutella. I would fuck it up too. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, oh, I'll just wash it down with a piece of earlobe. Yeah, like, why not? Exactly. It gets worse. Before we started this absolute shit show week, Henrietta and I made a pact to try and not literally shit for six days that we were gone because there was nowhere to go. However, this pack was broken on the fourth day. Oh my we God. held our rock solid shits in for four straight days and it was time to get it out. Yeah, you guys made a pact and it was impacted. Yes. <laughs> there was no holding back anymore. So we prayed that when we got to the next campsite, there are at least outhouses. Nope, no outhouse. It's drizzling. So we need to bear hug a fucking tree and squat. While this is happening, there's flies everywhere. You can probably just imagine. The fifth day, my knees gave out and I could barely walk anymore. On top of not being able to walk, the chafe was so bad. I also couldn't even smell myself. I was so immune, but I know it was just lethal. Oh, and we hiked about five miles one day through a mosquito farm, so we were extremely itchy pretty much the entire time. What the fuck is a mosquito farm? Why are they making it? This sounds like inhumane. For For to be a gym teacher? Yeah, that sounds like a fetish of somebody who's running that. Like McKamey Manor. Have you heard of that? No. The Haunted House. It sounds to me kind of like uh, like a scared straight program or like corrupted kids or something. Like that sounds bad too. But like, you know what I mean? Like those yeah. like, oh, we're going to like put you in the wilderness. Kind of like what they did to Paris Hilton. Yeah. But um, it's like they're, she's like, I'm literally in higher ed. Like, what is this? Well, this trip was a true nightmare. They still require this class. And I feel horrible for anyone who ever has to go through this. And yep, you guessed it. I did indeed get the C. Thank you for listening to my one and only miserable camping experience. The only time I'll ever go camping again is at Camp Shady Burge. Thank you for making me cackle every week. You two are my favorite camp counselors. I just know you wouldn't do this to me. Love y'all. Your favorite gym teacher, Mrs. D in Cabin 3. Love you. Absolutely would never make you do something like that. Um, I would force you to sit in a room with a working air conditioner and paint my nails. Oh. That's what I would do. Yeah, and we need a, we need a gym teacher at camp because it's not us. No, and we don't do dodgeball. Maybe tetherball. Oh, I, I actually used to play tetherball all the time in elementary school. I like tetherball. I like four square. Four square is fun. I was really good at four square. I like that when you like start in square one and then when someone gets out, you move square two. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, how long can you last in square four? Time will tell. I like, well, yeah, we can, I don't know, host pinkle ball. I don't know. It'll be fun. But thank you so much for writing in. I'm sorry you went through that. I am still confused as to how that relates to a gym teacher. But you've got the skills. This episode of Camp Counselors is sponsored by BetterHelp. Having a self-care summer is easier said than done, campers. That's why it's important to have self-care non-negotiables. When your schedule is packed with camp activities, big work projects, the kids are home from school, you know, it's easy to let your own priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But it's when you feel like you have no time for yourself. Non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. It's like those safety videos for planes where they say you have to put on your own mask before helping others. That's what we have to do here, campers. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. 
Visit BetterHelp.com slash camp to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash camp. Do you have a story for us? I do have a story for you. Thank you so much for asking. This is another confession canard. Ooh. Hi, counselors. Thank you both so much for your dedication to the show. Your goofy commentary, sincere hearts, and creative and optimistic outlooks never fail to put a smile on my face while I work hard to help clients reveal joy and emotions in their lives. You are a true gift to all of us campers and a mental retreat for me to find peace and laughter in my busy days. Oh my God, wait, what do you do? I don't think she's... Oh, she does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Recalling, we've been reading a lot of stories. Okay, I'm going to get into it. I am writing you as a former summer camp counselor for 10 years. Woo! And a current, almost certified psychotherapist counselor today. Okay. Are you certified by, by the time this comes out? Who knows? She upgraded. She said, I'm past camp. I'm doing psychotherapy. As you should. Congratulations. Love you. I made a big move from my hometown in Ontario, Canada to pursue my master's in counseling psychology in Western Canada. This story comes from my younger days as a spunky nine-year-old girl with far too much energy and far too little self-awareness. To put this in perspective, I was a provincial gymnast. Do you know what that is? It sounds like I, a gymnast that's pretty good. I'm saying that totally incorrectly. Province. Provincial. Provincial? I think it's provincial. Provincial? It's preventative. <laughs> um, I did ask Samich what that meant, and he did report back. Prevent, provincial. <laughs> I'm just going to mumble it. Provincial gymnast typically refers to a gymnastics competition and events that are held at a state level or a providential level uh, within the country. Provincial, because it's probably a, a derivative of the word province. Yeah, probably. Thank you. Um, basically it's, it is, it's impressive yeah, and, and I'm impressed competing at a high level. Yeah. So she was a gymnast at the time and would literally bounce off the walls when I received the slightest bit of enthusiasm or encouragement from a classmate or a friend. I was really that kid when it came to being obnoxious and annoying in class or at recess, fueled by few and far between comments like, Oh girl, you're so quirky and cute. <laughs> Also important for context, I am the oldest of myself and my younger sister. I really only had my dad and my one male cousin who I didn't see too often. I spent most of my time around females at gymnastics and for the most part, didn't know much about boys aside from being snot and fart machines that never wanted to play house with me. Another piece of my story was that my family's pursuit of faith at the time was the new world of evangelical Christianity. As I write to you at my current age of 27, I have deconstructed my faith and developed some alternative ways of being spiritual, but cherish, and sometimes I'm deeply traumatized by, the many elements of my time in a Christian faith community. Aren't we all... That said, at the time of the story, I was deeply invested in learning all the ins and outs of this religion, including the foreign terminology that would be used during sermons or scripture passages. As a nine-year-old with nothing but enthusiasm and a desperate love of attention, <laughs> listen, I can relate. I was eager to take any opportunity to share what felt like very exclusive knowledge I had attained from time at church. With this in mind, I should mention that some of the terminology I was being exposed to was a bit advanced for my level of maturity at the time. Not to mention, I was too young to be learning about the human anatomy, but I was not, not quite capable to conceptualize everything and what it really meant. I was learning about old historic practices in the Old and New Testament of the Bible, including how male anatomy was traditionally approached for babies at the time why are they these like I, I it's not necessary you don't have to teach like the bible and bring that into it i feel you really don't not to a nine-year-old especially no, no. Like, for what and not to make it political but i am because my existence purely is political apparently like it's all about pride being sexualized to children drag story times okay why are we teaching children about the male anatomy and bible study okay that seems a little sexualization 
Let's cut that snip snip. <laughs> One Sunday, these practices were being explained. Of course, as a nine-year-old with my mind in other places, the words registered in my mind, but the definition in context must have slipped out the other ear. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to elementary school as we sat down for English class the next day. The teacher began explaining the definition of a synonym and moved forward with asking the class for some examples of words that mean the same thing as other words. Moving through the alphabet, we got to the letter C. My teacher then asked, what is another word for smaller that starts with a C? Many hands shot up, including mine. I initially thought to myself, I think I remember this word talked about on Sunday. Something about reducing or taking away. That could mean small too. Yeah, I know. That's just the thing. And it's a word from church. So I bet I'll impress the teacher and no one else is going to say it. Confidently, I spoke up after my hand was pointed to and I shouted, circumcise. <laughs> I was expecting a sincere gratitude from my teacher for bringing up such an advanced and mature language into our class, but was met with the opposite. Yeah, like, no yeah, shit. no shit. Immediately, the boys started giggling around me and the girls just pointed. The teacher just looked in disappointment in me and annoyed with the class. What's the issue? I thought to myself. I learned this word in church. Why are people being so weird? My teacher eventually calms the class down and turned his attention back to me. He looked me square in the face and said, concise. Yes. Great word. Concise can be a synonym for smaller. <laughs> She's like, sure, we'll go with that. Like the teacher's really just thinking on his feet. But you know what? Kids do. They say the darndest things. Kids say the darndest things. You can imagine the look on my parents' faces when I told them the story after school. I imagine the disappointment they showed was only masking their embarrassment and laughter at my naivety. I almost said nativity. Uh, once they told me what the word actually meant, I was horrified and wished that I was the one who could have become smaller. <laughs> Long story short, I didn't speak up in class for quite a while after that. I also started to pay much better attention during Sunday school. I can't say my love for attention really lessened, though. But let's just say my journey towards stronger self-awareness began that day. Thanks for listening from the over-talkative former tween in cabin 13. Oh my god, guys. Snip, snip. Scary stories around the campfire. Welcome back to Scary Stories. Everyone's getting circumcised here. <laughs> whoa, oh whoa, whoa. my god. This is the part of the show where we read your submitted stories, either embarrassing or scary. Could be a UFO, or as I call an UFO. Could be a Bigfoot sighting. Could be a paranormal situation. Or you shitting your pants in middle school. Anything goes. This is kind of scary, my first one. It's kind of scary and definitely embarrassing. Okay. It's my favorite kind. Okay. Hi, silly counselors. Hi. I'll keep the intro and obligatory compliments to a minimum. You bring smiles to my face, sparkles to my heart, and infect infectious new phrases to my vocabulary. Not infections. <laughs> Is that how you say that? Infectious. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, now, here's the story of the time I got my first panic attack. Oh. I remember my first panic attack at my grandmother's house. Nana. Because Jackson wasn't sleeping over that night. He was at a friend's house. So I had to sleep in the upstairs bedroom, which had two twin beds on the top floor. And she was on the bottom floor. Oh. And I literally could. I thought I was. I was. Ugh, I say it all the time. Elizabeth Smart ruined my life. Um, she's like, my life was ruined, baby. Um no, I thought I was going to be abducted. And I, my nan, it was so bad. I, I went downstairs. I called my parents at like midnight and my nana heard me because I'm like sobbing in the bathroom. And she had to put a cold face cloth on my forehead oh, to I calm can't. me down. <laughs> That was my, it was a panic attack too, for sure. Yeah, sleeping away without family or nobody in the room, that's scary as it could. It was so, her bedroom, my bedroom was so far away from anyone else's bedroom. Like I could have been abducted. That's scary. I'm fine. <laughs> um, now here's the story of my first panic attack. It was about two years ago. And I was embarking alone on a long, monotonous drive from my current home of Providence, shout out PC, to my hometown several states away. PC is like the really good school in Providence, besides Brown, obviously. Pacific Providence Coast Co Highway? Providence College. Oh. I went to the lesser important school down the road. Rick. 
Rhode Island College. Mm. <laughs> no, that's not true. No, it is. That's Who? like a D1 school. And I went to a D3 school. Our our mascot was the Anchorman, which were truly just pirates. It was so weird. The Anchorman. I <laughs> not know. Not them being like news anchors. I, no, they yeah, exactly. They're just the guy who threw the anchor off the boat. I'm like, so the low man on the totem pole is our mascot? We're going to be the captain? Well, without him, the ship would have sailed away. No, someone else could have stepped up and threw the anchor. It doesn't mean a whole position. Well, bringing it back full circle to the beginning of this episode, who else went to that college? Viola Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Me and her are the the big, the big exports. So put some respect on Rick. I want my face on there. There's like a really cool hallway. They have all like the really like successful alumni. And it's like people that like run business companies. Boring. Boo. And it's in like the acting building, in the music building. Yeah. I think I should like, well, maybe not now. Okay. Like I'm not going to toot my own horn. But like at some point, Rhode Island College, please reach out. I would love to like even write in the alumni magazine. Yeah. Like they haven't asked, hey, they don't care about me at all. Listen, the state of Pennsylvania gives no fucks about me. Wawa won't even reach out. They'll reach out to you. (laughs) You didn't even like Wawa. I do like it now, though, but at the time I didn't. Mm -hmm. But you know, I like it now. No, yeah. I'm I'm excited to get one this week. Oh my God. Yeah, we're going to get Wawa this week. Oh, wait, let's get back to the story. Okay. This was at the height of my situationship with Celsius energy drinks. Oh. And I believe that I had three that morning. Oh, should I? Maybe I'll bleep that out. Why? I don't know. No, it's okay because she had too much. Okay. I don't think anyone would recommend having three Celsius in a morning. Not even in a whole day, in the morning. That is not good. If you've never had Celsius, it's like Red Bull on steroids. I love them as pre workout. I think they're great. And the watermelon sparkling is my favorite. To me, I feel like Red Bull is more intense until I start really? to get until I start to get the alerts on my watch. I think it's because the flavor is sweeter and it's not like super carbonated. Like it tastes like a little, a nice little juicy drink. And then my watch is going off. It happened twice today that my heart rate was above 120. And they were like, babe, you're not moving. You're sitting. Yeah, that's too much. It's too much. And it happened twice. Well, about a half hour into her journey, her heart began to race just like that. My, um, She says, my legs began to shake. My vision began to narrow. I white knuckled toward the nearest exit, all while reciting, this is a panic attack. This is a panic attack. This is a panic attack. I pull over at a gas station. Horrendous parking job, obviously. Despite my best efforts to convince myself this was just a panic attack, I was terrified that it might be something more. Two gas station employees watched in confusion, then concern, as I exited the car and called 911 for herself. Oh my God. Through haggard gasps and sobs. I told the operator, I think I'm having a heart attack, but it might be a panic attack. I'm not sure. (laughs) A few minutes later, an ambulance rolled up sirens, lights, and all. Then exited, porn stash first, an incredibly handsome EMT. He was such a cutie, counselors. Like Jeremy Allen White. We just were talking about the bear. Okay. How crazy is that? Everything's full circle. And Henry Cavill mixed together. I don't find Henry Cavill to be my cup of tea. See, I do. And I don't with Jeremy Allen White. I kind of feel like Henry Cavill to me is a little too like. Too pretty boy. Too pretty boy. I I need someone that like, okay, I don't think Henry Cavill has ever smoked a cigarette. And to me, that's a turn off. Okay. I need to know that you've had a, a, a troubled past at some point or you've made some bad decisions. Henry Cavill's like worst quality probably is that he like, I don't know. Doesn't make the bed in the morning. Or like sk- skips leg day. Like who cares? Or has skid marks on his shorts. Well, I don't, that's more Jeremy Allen White for sure. Ooh, Jeremy um, Allen Brown. Well, this guy that looks like both of them was also wearing a uniform that was too small, but in a sexy way. <gasps> oh, um, okay. So he, if there's like buttons going down where the muscles are, it's pulling apart a little bit. Oh, he's hot. Oh my God. And to the point where you can kind of see a little whisper of chest hair. Of course. This is like a certified hottie and you're having a mental breakdown. Um, and I was there in a gas station parking lot, literally just freaking out for no reason. Yeah, I was going to say in a gas station parking lot. <laughs> he asked me a few questions, took my pulse, and assured me that I was not having a heart attack, but that he recommended I go to the hospital anyway. They always do that, but they have to cover their own bases. They have to cover their own assholes. I was still unconvinced that there was nothing wrong with my heart and certainly in no state to say no to Jeremy Cavill White. I got in. Counselors, they didn't even turn the sirens on. The ambulance was not in a hurry. (laughs) As we drove, hot EMT asked me all the -the run-of-the-mill questions. We get to my birthday. He laughed. That's my birthday. (gasps) He said, I've never met someone with my my birthday before. Wow. My heart skipped a beat. And it wasn't just because I was still panicking. Could it be fate? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you guys wouldn't have to worry about remembering their birthday. 
He asked me if anything stressful had happened recently that may have caused this. I told him I had just broken up with my boyfriend of three years a few weeks ago, but I thought I was handling it well. He nodded understandingly. Well, sometimes these things affect us more than we realize. We have to take care of ourselves even when we don't think we need it. <laughs> Not her being like, no, yeah, I'm very single right now. Seriously, um, seriously. I had a boyfriend at one point, but I broke things off. So I am on the market. If you like what you see, let me know. You've got my chart. <laughs> Well, looking back, that was sweet and profound, and I probably should have thanked him for his wisdom. At the time, my goopy brain could only focus on how tingly my feet were. Oh yeah, he said, it's because you're in fight or flight. It'll go away. A few moments of silence. Again, no lights, no sirens. (laughs) Stopping at every stop sign. (laughs) And you know what they're going to do? They're going to hit her with the bill. That's going to be urgent. Oh, that's going to be bad. But when they're stopping at the stop sign... And it's an ambulance. It's bad. It's like, it's bad in the way that it's like, oh, wait, this was not an emergency. It, it could have been an Uber. No, but she knows. And it could have been an Uber. But, and you didn't know. But like, I love that you're aware that like, you're right. Like, this was not serious. Yeah. But you, d- you did what you had to do. It was precautionary. Anyway, you'll be okay. He assured me. You'll find someone else. You'll buy a house. Maybe you'll even have a kid. Oh, what a, okay. Through all the panic, embarrassment, and fear, a single thought burst through my mind. God, the housing market is shit. I'll never be able to afford a house, I said aloud, without thinking, obviously. <laughs> Where is this going? He goes, aw, don't say that. You never know. I'm only a little older than you, and I have a house. Then, in a truly <laughs> freakish way, I can only attribute to my hatred of the New England housing market and the fact that my brain was operating in lizard mode. I laughed dryly and asked, did you inherit it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought she was going to say, who, with who? Does girl live there too? Did you inherit it? Like, she's just barking. <laughs> oh, did you inherit it? Like, not her bullying him. No, I, I have a good job. Listen. No, he answered. I bought it with my wife. Oh. <laughs> oh, double whammy. And as if my ha- behavior towards this handsome sweet man actively taking me down from a panic attack in the back of an ambulance could not be more freakish, I responded, you son of a bitch. <laughs> She's crazy. I didn't say it aggressively. It was more of a ha ha, you lucky son of a bitch sort of way. But that intent was definitely lost on him because the rest of the ambulance ride was dead silent. God damn it. Why didn't they turn on those sirens? She was in distress under duress. Truly. Anyways, I ended up staying at the ER in Milford, Massachusetts for several hours only to be told I should probably break things off with Celsius and unceremoniously discharged. Ew, not the discharge. On the drive back, I was so shell-shocked, I accidentally tailgated a state trooper. I know. Freak behavior after freak behavior. (laughs) (laughs) When he pulled me over and asked where I was coming from, I burst out crying and showed him my hospital band. He was very uncomfortable and let me off with a warning. So maybe start carrying a spare hospital band and a tear sticker, oh, and a tear stick while you're out driving, just in case. Thank you for reading and for being such great counselors. Happy Pride if you're reading this in June. And happy early Pride if you're reading this literally any other time of the year. (laughs) Sincerely, the camper who was freaking out behind the mess hall. This is so funny because at the front of this email, the start of it, she says, an infectious new phrase is to my vocabulary. She thinks it's for. There is a phrase in here that I am stealing. What? Um, What does she say? It's so funny. Hold on. Freak behavior after, after freak, freak behavior. behavior. Like when things are going weirder and weirder and you just can't control yourself, it truly is freak behavior after freak behavior. You got pulled over by the car in front of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is freak freaky. behavior. <laughs> that is, you are so, you're tailgating a state trooper, you son of a bitch. Like, oh my God, that is so funny. And there was a there was a point when I was reading this when they were like sharing a birthday. I was like, not this starting off as a love story. I know it really could have been. Maybe you weren't having a panic attack feeling that weird thing in your toes. Maybe that was love. Hey, maybe it was a maybe it wasn't a panic attack. Maybe it was the friends we made along the way. Oh. Should have ruined the marriage. Just kidding. Don't do that. No. We don't condone that here. Jeremy Allen Cavill or whatever she said. That that was really funny. It was really funny. I love Celsius, but I would never drink three in one morning. You are strong, mama. I do get anxiety from drinking. Um, I got it for the first time drinking black coffee my first year out of college. I like drank three cups of coffee at work. Yeah. And I really didn't have anything stressful going on. And I just remember this 
intense feeling being like, wait, this feels like a panic attack, but I'm like, what am I bugging about? I'm by myself. I think a great way to like, because I've gotten a caffeine induced panic attack too from uh, a Duncan a Duncan cold brew, which is like mm-hmm. that. I feel like cold brew from Duncan is like really like high, highly caffeinated in a good way. But I feel like what I do if I have too much anxiety from caffeine is I eat. Oh, yeah, sop it up. Yeah, you, get, you really like, it's like a sponge. Sop it up. Mm, very true. Hey, girlies, I'm Cody Rigsby. And I'm Andrew Chappelle. We're here to announce our brand new podcast, Tactful Pettiness, now on Podcast One. We have a lot of opinions. Flip-flops in New York City? You don't love yourself. If I'm not seated, I'm not tipping. Do I want to see a picture of your baby? No. No. If I have to scroll more than 10 seconds, he's not cute. Settling gets you an ugly boyfriend. So we're going to help you out. We sure are, because we have the life expertise. We have mastered throwing shade with intention. We are in the business of helping you find and keep your man. And we're here to teach you the fine art of tactful pettiness. Join us each week as we traverse the world of pop culture, chat with our celebrity friends, and show you how to accept yourself without taking life too seriously. Get new episodes of Tactful Pettiness with me, Cody Rigsby, and me, Andrew Chappelle, every Thursday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Stay petty, bestie. So do you have a, another scary story for us? I do. Okay, campers. You heard me at the beginning. If you are squeamish, if you are squirmish, if you're a horse, maybe click off. <laughs> yeah, this is a truly like, oh, no, 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 no kind of story. But it's actually so good. We have to read it. If you don't care, you're going to love it. Zach, de- Zach read this one and he was like, you should read this. And he gave me a warning before I read it. And it's um, it's something. Okay, are are the babies gone? Stop it. Bye. Okay. Strong mamas only. Hey, sassy campers. Hey. I am so obsessed with you two and the pod, which you may have already gathered from my wine drunk DMs. I'm just a girl. <laughs> anyway, this might look long, but just stick with me. Picture this. It's a gorgeous afternoon in 1998. I'm five. My sister is seven. I lived in a small town called Snowflake, Arizona. If you know, you know, but no one knows. <laughs> that's funny. That's Snowflake, Arizona. That's so funny, but also so cinematic. It sounds like something that would be in the Disney Channel. Yeah, it's giving Grinch ass. To me, it reminds me of the, what's the Christmas movie where they make the snowmaker? Oh, the best Christmas present ever. The ultimate Christmas present. The ultimate ultimate Christmas Christmas gift. gift. Yeah. And that was in California, I believe. Yeah. There's snow in California? Yeah. But like in Arizona, how like funny is that? It's like, it doesn't snow in Snowflake. Well, it actually can snow in Arizona. It can. I've seen Sister Wives. In Snowflake, maybe. Okay. That's cute. We love the name regardless. Okay, safe to say everyone knew each other and their animals. My grandma was in town from North Carolina, and so my sister, my mom, and I were showing her around our cute little town. We went to my godmother's house, who had a farm, which included horses we were very familiar with. Okay, so we're friends with the horses in the stable. My godmother asked my mom to bring in a specific horse to the stable while company was over because it was known to be a dick to strangers. Some horses are just dicks. Some horses are. It's like a dog where it's like, okay, he doesn't like other people, but it's like horses... I campers, if you've never ridden a horse, which it's very likely, and not everyone's ridden a horse before, we both had horseback riding lessons as kids. Horses are massive beasts. They're beasts. They're beasts. And they're mostly sweet. I've met 46, 46 horses I've met in my life. And one of them was awful. It was Oki. I've already talked about him on this podcast. There's a picture of him. He's oh, awful. That's funny. I've, I've actually met 48 horses. Oh, okay. Well, I know what I'm doing serious? this weekend. Have you really met 46 horses? Why do you know how many number have you met? Are you being silly? I have a punch card. No, I'm just being silly. Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, the way you said it so deadpan, I was like, you know, Jonathan, like sometimes you have experiences that I can't even believe are true. <laughs> Me neither. Okay. So the specific horse is going inside because he's a dick to strangers. Okay. My mom brought my sister and I with her because we weren't strangers and knew the horse well. While my sister and I are in our own little worlds, likely being annoying, a horse lunges down for my sister. Without thinking in mom mode, my mom quickly bends down and puts herself between my sister and the pissed off horse. And then a scream. Okay, campers, here we go. 
Next thing you know, my mom is frantically telling us to get in the car and my grandma is in full panic mode. My mom asked grandma to drive, but grandma was freaking out. We didn't know what was going on until my mom started driving with her knees, using one hand to apply pressure to her chest and the other hand to drive stick shift. First of all, in an emergency, grandma, pull it together. Seriously. Pull it to you. you grandma, drive. She's like, I can't. This isn't about you. Okay, you're fine. Literally. Just drive, grandma. This is your daughter. You need to be strong, mama, grandma. Oh, she probably didn't know where the hospital was. She was visiting. Okay, well, she can take directions. My dad was only a block away and thankfully on a smoke break. My mom speeds up, rolls down the window and yells, meet me at the hospital. A horse bit my nipple off. Oh my God. My dad's face blank and confused. She repeats louder. Meet me at the fucking hospital. A horse bit my fucking nipple off. God. All while my grandma is screaming in the passenger seat. Camper, you have to be. This is traumatizing. (sighs) Okay. The horse had bit and clenched, and when he released her nipple, it fell from her boob to the bottom of her bra. Then in her bra, I'm sorry, Cambers, her nipple was rolling around. (laughs) God. What are the chances? In all of this frenzy, I'm not sure what happened next at the hospital, but who knew Snowflake, Arizona would have some of the best plastic surgeons? Great. Her fake ninny is still (laughs) intact, and you'd never know it's fake. Wait, I love calling it a ninny. I've never heard of that. A little ninny? A little ninny. A ninny twister. She even recently had a boob job, and they kept the same bionic nip. That sounds like a drink you would order at like a weird dive bar. A bionic nip? Yeah. Well, I love that, like, the plastic surgeon saw her bionic nipple and was like, wait, this was so well done. Let's just keep it. Yeah, why not? Naturally, I've had a fear of horses since then. My mom, on the other hand, loves those majestic creatures. It's like, I get it. Mom's like, (laughs) quite literally, you got to get back up on that horse. Is that how the saying goes? Yeah, you got to get back get, get back up on the horse. Got to get back up on that horse, well, even if it ripped your nipple off. You can't really blame animals sometimes. You I'm really... bla- Sorry, I'm blaming the horse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fast forward last year, a group of friends and I traveled to Charlottesville, Virginia, stunning if you've never been, for a 30th birthday weekend. We stumbled upon a gorgeous vineyard with a polo match happening. The girlies were living our best Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman lives. Sorry to trigger Jonathan. Guys, I don't hate Julia Roberts. I was really feeling all of my horse fears drift away. I even called my mom to agree with her and tell her maybe horses aren't so bad. (laughs) When all of a sudden, in the middle of the game, a horse kicked off a rider. The rider was taken to the hospital and later reported was okay. My drama, on the other hand, not so much. So for like a brief second, a blip in the time our camper was like okay horses aren't so bad and then (laughs) this happened she's like you know what i'm gonna steer clear i'm gonna steer clear there's the horse girl and then there's the anti-horse girl oh literally this is what she says next i took that as a sign to steer clear of horses uh and i believe the feeling is mutual sincerely the camper that's gonna skip the horse riding excursion in cabin 12 oh my god like that is so painful and scary one time my mom shut the car door on my brother's fingers oh that's almost like a nipple being ripped off by a horse no i just think like sudden urges of like insane pain like that i just i can't i can't Mm. imagine and obviously like and nipples worse for sure. Yeah, and when you're how how old was she? Five or something? And her sister, yeah, she was five. Her sister seven. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's traumatizing enough where she still remembers it in detail to write it into. How us. could you? For, I don't think I'll ever forget that story. I don't think I will either. Well, another unforgettable episode of Trail Mix. <laughs> if you stuck around this long, thank you so much. If you want to be a part of the show, you can send your stories into campcounselorspodcast.com or campcounselorspod at gmail.com. Please share the show with a friend that you love, a friend that you hate, a friend that you're just feeling eh about. That would be fun too. And if you haven't yet and you'd like to, to support our show, you can rate and review our show five stars wherever you're listening. It would mean the world to us or don't. That's your prerogative. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Wednesday and Monday. We'll see you forever. And with that being said, lights out campers. campers.